What's up, Zox fam? And we're back with some more Death Light. Now, a lot of you guys are either returning from, you know, last time you played was Ali's banner or Zeus's banner, or you're new to the community, or you're mid-game and still trying to figure it out. Uh, so I wanted to dive into sustain comps, right? Because I noticed that a lot of people are trying to build for speed comps. Yes, I get it. You got the units, but you're missing the gear. Right, And I want to talk about that big gap that you have between a speed and a sustain comp uh, and really what is required, right? So we're going to be jumping right into it. Definitely make sure that you guys like and subscribe so you don't miss out on any of the exclusive content. But let's go ahead and let's get right into it. Now, first things first, guys, uh, we're going to be taking a look at Chronos. Now, I want to talk about like the integration of the freebie five star that you're able to get as well, um, because these are obviously the workups um, and really what you're aiming for on your account to be able to successfully do this now the other thing is is that um, with these kinds of comps right so let's quickly talk about sustain versus uh, you know a speed clear I think it's easier to say that with a sustain clear and a speed clear they both can be consistent right I think that that's very very important to say the big dilemma is, is that if you're one of those players either returning from like, you know, almost a year ago or over a year ago, you're new or you're mid game, you are going to have issues. And it's just simply put with gear, right? It's just as simple as that goes. Your gear is not going to be as good when you're talking about speed clears and primarily when you're looking at the scaling and the big gap that you have from a sustained consistent comp to a speed clear consistent comp is damage, right? You're usually going for more damage. A lot of speed clears, a lot of times don't even have supports on them if they're not some sort of an attack boost. And if they are doing that, they still themselves a lot of times can do damage too. So that's kind of like the whole idea there. Now, with the sustain comps, we're going to jump into the Phantom Sister integration. Now, really simple. If you don't have the Phantom Sisters, you can literally use a Zer Dragon or you can use Death Guard Hay. It's not that crazy. It will still be the same lineup, though. Hung Yue, Chang Pu, uh, Jiang Mong, Kara, and then the Phantom Sisters. So we're going to go ahead and blitz this real quick. So we're going to play this so you guys can see it because I want you guys to kind of get an idea of what exactly you're taking advantage of. Now, yes, with these changes in the game, there was a lot of things changed for like resistances and things of that nature. But um, with Kronos, this boss can still be poisoned. Um, it's just not as much of the like ideal method when you're trying to do much faster clears. But for slower clears, poison still works extremely well. And I think that that's one thing that a lot of people haven't really like um you know they don't really emphasize that poison can still work really well for this uh but it does right uh now the cool thing is, is that Kara is a flow attuned esper and so that makes it to where you aren't dealing with any like um you know disadvantages damage from the boss uh and of course, with poison, poison scales off of the enemy's HP, so you don't have to worry about building any attack values or anything like that. The only thing you need to emphasize is speed and uh, HP defense. That's literally it, right? Now, the cool thing about this comp, and the reason why this comp works so well, is that the alternative would be Sally, but you don't get Sally until you clear Spatio Tower for the first time. Now, if you're one of those individuals that will say a Lucas account, um, and that's an account that instead of Sally, you had Lucas on the Spatio Tower, that means that uh, more than likely you're going to have to do a comp like this, uh, especially if you're not rocking out with like a unit like Clara, because she can't technically do this, um, or uh, like I said, Sally. Uh, now, Chang Pu, I think, again, is one of those units that at this point probably is a little underrated just because a lot of people don't think that she's as valuable going into late game because she is a three star. But one of the things here that you'll see is predominantly happening. Happening. we're getting AP manipulation we're getting the poison we have a crap ton of HP restoration and we also on top of that we have some damage coming through from Jiang because Jiang is actually like kind of helping out with that damage as well so the good thing is is that even though this might take a little bit longer than like some other runs we're still going to be maintaining that poison I think was it poisons like I think three percent or something like that right I think it's like each poison stack is like three uh, percent and I think that Kara uh, honestly is one of the best for it because 
with her passive, she's able to stack multiple poisons if there's already poisons applied. So that's something that is kind of an edge for her. Uh, I think accuracy is going to be a pretty big deal uh, just to make sure that she's landing those poisons so you're not in this fight as long. Uh, but when you do see these comps kind of work, it is really nice to see. Um, so it looks like we're coming up to the last poison. She didn't poison there, but that's okay. Oh, and the other thing is, too, is that Jiang Mong can also poison. Uh, I don't think a lot of people actually realize that, but uh, Jiang Mong can actually poison. Uh, and the other thing is to also also mention, mention, Jesus Christ, I can't talk, also mention with Jiang Mong is that Jiang Mong does not need Avatara when she's at six star uh, or sorry, uh, R6. Um, when she is, um, you know, below that, she doesn't get that counter or follow up if the person has um, the Netherbloom proc on them. So I would say at that point, then you want to make sure you have uh, that, um, you know, avatar set on her. But for what it's worth, when you have her at R6, she does not need, um, you know, the avatar set. So that right there, we got the clear. And there's one other thing that I want to mention as well. So we're going to go ahead and go back real quick. All right. I'm going to close. Now, uh, one thing I want to mention is that with blitzing, this is just to kind of give you a generalized idea of what exactly you want to be doing as far as a goal. Right. Um, so I would say a pretty safe goal when first starting this is to try to aim to get anywhere between 51 and 110 turns when you first make this comp though and especially doing 16 it might take you longer you might be up there you know at the 111 or higher um, and honestly you probably aren't going to be doing 16 realistically right away but these teams do work when you do get the proper gear necessary to be able to run them uh honestly for the entirety of your account if you don't care, care about speed clears you can technically do this right uh but the goal ultimately at least starting out is 51 through 110 on chronos but if you can get it under that 50 turns at any point, that's the sweet spot. Um, any faster than that is not requ it's not required to be any faster than uh, or really 50 turns because really speed clearing is mainly for the competitive aspect of leaderboards. Um, there's really no other benefit outside of that because, I mean, if you walk away to go do other stuff and you're I mean, a lot of times you're not going to really know if you finish your clear on a speed clear or sustain if you go and you go do something else. Right. So just kind of want to throw that in there. So as far as the unit builds, what you want to make sure that you are trying to maintain, like with the Phantom Sisters, if you don't have Ocean Waves, uh, you can do Windwalker. Nothing too complex there. Uh, definitely go for defense percent, HP percent or, um, you know, HP percent and then speed two, one. So as far as the units builds, um, now I will say as far as like what the Phantom Sisters have equipped, I have them on Ocean Waves. Uh, that's primarily because I don't have them max skilled up, um, but they still can work on the uh, Windwalker set, which is fine. Uh, you can do HP percent, HP percent and speed. Don't have to go too crazy there. Could also do accuracy as well on the recurve set if you are short on some accuracy because that is going to help them with their AP manipulation. Uh, for Hang Yue, uh, try to make sure that she's as tanky as possible. Uh, we're giving uh, a little bit more healing efficiency. You can also slap her on Windwalker as well. Uh, and then, of course, on the groove set, we have her with speed. Um, so you don't have to go too much, you know, or like too crazy with that. Uh, Chang Pu, same thing wind set uh we're going to be going hp percent hp percent and speed that's just to make her tanky now i know some people would say like well what about her healing value because it scales off of her attack well the thing is is that um you could technically go for like attack subs but i think running her with attack for example so say you would do attack percent attack percent she's going to be too squishy individually and it's just going to cause her to die and you're not going to have that immunity coverage to kind of help overlap um, or overlay I should say because it's not uh, it's kind of there usually when uh, Hung Yue dispels you're able to overlay with immunity so that you don't have to worry about having any uh, debuffs to remove again for a couple of turns so that's going to be really really important uh, now uh, obviously Jiang Mong I do have built on a damage build uh, the thing is with her uh, we have a crit damage percent attack percent and we have her on attack percent now the thing is is that if your Jiang Mong is having trouble surviving 
having, you can go for a tankier build. Uh, now, the thing is, is that you also want to make sure you try to have a little bit of uh, accuracy on her. Um, and if you don't have her, and I want to mention this too, Rezos do make a difference to a degree. They're not required for you to be able to run this on a sustain comp. If anything, for these units specifically, they get a little bit more extra to make them perform more efficiently, but it doesn't mean that they're not able to do this without Rezos. So for example, uh, R6 Jiang Mang actually gets the opportunity to be able to counterattack if the opponent has Netherbloom on them, right? So if she gets hit by Chrono, so he's going to do that anyway because of the AoE, she's going to be able to retaliate, which means at that point, you don't need the Avatar set for her. It's actually counterproductive. Whereas when you don't have it, then you kind of want that Avatar set so that you're able to get that counter or that follow up if you do get hit, right? So that's where you kind of have those differences uh in like the changes of what the character has um like the same thing with kara she is able to give a extra ap uh like pushback um and like give misery up but it doesn't necessarily make it to where she's not usable if you don't have that now the biggest thing with car is just making her tanky as well you got her in the win set defense percent hp percent and speed you could go hp hp speed um but making sure you have enough accuracy um i would even say if you want to if you can at least get 100 that would be even better just so that she's always like in a place where she's landing her poison um she is kind of one of the best choices for this too because uh if there's a poison afflicted uh she's able to add an additional poison and that triggers uh one time on each tar um, on each target per turn so this actually makes it where she can in a sustain comp kill the tablets which i'm pretty sure you've seen the tablets ended up one of the tablets died but before Kronos even died. So that does help us significantly because it's also some AP manipulation that he loses. But uh, either way, it is a really reliable way to get that damage without actually having the damage, like as far as crit damage, attack percent, uh, you know, crit rate, all that jazz, right? So that's going to be kind of the idea behind a sustained Kronos team um, that, again, uh, you know, you get the resos that is going to make a huge difference um, as far as extra utility, but the team should still be able to function even without it. The only thing I will say is that if you are going to use Hung Yue, it is important because she is your main source of sustain for healing. You want to make sure she's skilled up completely right uh the same thing for her passive uh and even for her s1 because this gives you an opportunity to be able to dispel uh buffs but it also triggers her passive which is going to also give you more potential healing right regen okay now we're gonna shift into a pep now this is gonna be a little bit different as far as this sustain comp uh just because really it's like three of the units are a little bit more tankier uh whereas the other two need to have damage like they are your damage dealers um i will say that a pep is going to be one of those secondary focuses after Kronos. Um, it does become a little bit more of a prevalent thing to do. You're still going to want to do it, right? Because there are some really important sets here. But I definitely think like as far as like 100% mastering it, it might take you a little bit more just because dealing with the poison can be really annoying. And you do need some pretty solid gear to be able to do it. Uh, but the units we're going to be using, Sanders, Jozer, that Hung Yue you were just using on Kronos, uh, Queen Mother, and Stuart. Now, the thing that's really good about this is that this is giving you the opportunity to be able to cleanse. You're going to be able to apply that defense break and disease via Joja. And then, of course, you have your damage, right? So we're going to talk about that. Let's go ahead and blitz it real quick. It's the easiest thing to do. Ooh, a nice 64 turns. I mean, that is going to vary because it can go all the way up to like one something. It all depends on when Joja actually... Um, does his defense break um disease the earlier you're able to get that on a pep one it it stops all healing on him but then two it opens up the door for that damage right so if you're getting that damage on uh you know a pep after a defense break it's going to make the run so much faster and that's kind of like one of the big things that uh, a lot of the players usually have to like kind of battle against is getting that right uh so it looks like we're coming close to finishing this up 
Now, the other thing is, too, I will say resos, like over time, you are going to want to get those resos. If you are doing 15, and that's the other like disclaimer, guys, if you are doing this at first doing 15 for a while so you could get better relics or even get resos on some of your units, that's OK. Right. Uh, don't feel the need like to be 100 percent doing 16 right away because it is a grind. Right. It is going to be a process and you definitely need to have relics uh, to some degree that are built up for you to be able to do this. Now, the other thing that I've seen a lot of people also doing, too, is they, you know, kind of confused as to why they're not clearing a pep or they're not clearing chronos. But then when I would look at their gear, they're using plus 12 pieces. You have to plus 15 those pieces. And yes, that does require gold. And yes, that might take you a little bit more time than many of us would have liked it not to have. But it is a required step for you to be able to get the full effect on the percentage value that you have. Like I was looking at like some people like when you have like, say, for example, 80%, uh, 80% on uh 44 which is plus 12 uh you're missing i think like a good eight percent per piece somewhere around there uh and that's or 11 sorry and that's like 20 something percent almost uh when you're looking at um you know or actually no it's nine it's nine percent so it's 18 percent uh that you're missing um when you're talking about potential hp value right and so it's a lot that you have to consider um when you don't have uh pieces leveled properly right now essentially with this comp it pretty much has itself pretty i would say secure uh i think it is again i am giving that disclaimer i do have resos but the resos aren't so much to the point to where these units don't work if you don't have them right um as far as the efficiency of and really how fast the clear is that definitely will vary a little bit um but i will say like even if you have like r0 queen mother she's excellent you just need to build her tanky um of course even with Joser, uh, i think it is also important to mention because we'll show builds uh it's important to mention that with Joser, a lot of people were doing a build where it was like uh i think defense percent defense percent and defense percent no you want to have crit damage you want to have defense and then you want to have speed or uh, and then you want to have speed because he scales off a of defense um and then you want to make sure sub wise you have crit rate if you don't have enough crit rate value go with the fire reset so that's going to be your best bet i was using this for a, a speed clear thing i was doing before so i forgot to change it but um yeah this is, could be fire reset instead, as long as you're maintaining that crit rate value and you have accuracy on him. That's very, very important. He needs accuracy. The other thing is, is that it's also important for Joser to be one of the faster characters because he needs to be applying that disease and that defense break, right? So very, very important. Uh, Hades set is going to be a must on him just so he's able to keep himself alive. And the important fun fact about Joser is that if the rest of your team dies and there's only a certain amount of HP left, technically Joser can solo a pep and finish the fight off you just got to make sure that he has the proper things to keep himself alive which is the Hades set and of course I would say the fiery set would be a good go-to now outside of that uh, we also have my Sanders. Uh, my Sanders, I have on a broken build right now, but technically you want them on the fire reset, but it's still going to be the same exact concept. Uh, you want to at least make sure you have enough crit rate on him. Have speed value is going to be really important. So I'm getting that from subs, uh, but we are using the war set. So crit damage percent, attack percent, and attack percent. Uh, and that's just to make sure that he's doing enough damage. Uh, this is where, you know, you kind of have to be a little bit more intentional with like, obviously, uh, what value he's giving. Um, you you also can aim for accuracy so the recurve set wouldn't be bad on sanders here either because he is able to ap manipulate uh and then you also have uh queen mother queen mother uh you want to have some accuracy on her uh as well as a uh hp percent hp percent and speed now you don't have to use the ashla set i personally think that the ashla set is really nice on her because it gives her extra turns which procs her passive which means that she's cleansing more uh but if you don't have access to that the wind set is okay to utilize with the same values right so just make her as tanky as possible now it's also important to note i want you guys to see my queen mother ain't skilled up so i'm not getting those cooldown reductions uh like on her s3 which would be really nice or even the action point boost that she would get is not as high as it should be um so that's also you know important to note there right now um outside of that uh we have stewart 
lastly, uh, who I do have on a Thunder set right now, but you can build him on a War set, still emphasizing crit rate, crit damage. Um, accuracy is not going to be as crazy here because he's not able to sleep. So that would normally be kind of the big thing for him to have that accuracy to sleep. But here, technically, he could have no accuracy and just all attack crit damage and crit rate and whatever speed value just to help him rotate and that's good enough right so you don't have to go too too crazy there so now it is also important to note that if you have units like sally so i'm showing you at the lower efficiency level uh, if you have units like sally you can throw sally in here as well she does still work um but again i wanted to show it with hung yue because she is the lower incremented valued um support uh technically you could try to throw chang pu in here um, uh, the only thing with that is that Chang Pu is getting her immunity dispelled a lot. So that's why Queen Mother almost becomes very necessary for this. Like she actually is necessary for this. So I just want to kind of throw that out there, especially for 16. Queen Mother is very necessary if you're doing a sustained comp, right? So now we're going to move on to Fafnir. Now, I want to give a disclaimer for this is that uh, the units, specifically two of them, um, are they were free but um again i'm hoping that at some point um especially with elaine they add her to fusion because he's extremely good now i will give you some alternatives if you don't have her but uh definitely with ta as well ta was just in our freebie uh of our, our last event as the freebie unit that we were able to r6 she was pretty much made for fafnir as well um and she could be used in the event currently uh now if you don't have her r6 that's okay because i see a lot of accounts that have her she's not r6 you got the R2, that's more than enough, right? You don't have to go too crazy with uh, Rezos like you do with like Uday. Like Uday literally is not the same if you don't have Rezos. Uh, now, with this unit, um, she's going to be emphasizing the freeze onto her, which is just going to make your runs a little bit more consistent. Now, I will say there's a couple of different things I did just to make this more sustained uh, because I wanted to make sure that Elaine especially was surviving more. Uh, but we are going to be using Meredith, Li Guang, and Berenice just to help out. Uh, you get some passive healing coming from or you just get healing in general coming from Meredith you get Li Guang for damage and you also have uh, Berenice as well for sustain so uh, let's go ahead and blitz this real quick all right so we got 139 which is not bad considering and we're gonna go ahead and get into the run now, the thing is, is that uh, you're going to notice that my Elaine's not doing that much damage. Uh, a lot of it has to do with the fact that she will more than likely die in this kind of comp, to be quite fair. Uh, so I actually decided to make her tankier because one of the biggest elements about Elaine is the fact she has such a high hit count. She's guaranteed to give you 10 hits to Fafnir, uh, and that's kind of like irreplaceable so at that point we can kind of make that sacrifice for the aspect of sustaining so that you can be able to you know beat the fight uh and it will have lee guang doing our damage right so that's just kind of like the important thing there so she's still going to be useful for the sleep the buff blocker all that jazz but lee guang is going to be our dps for sure right so she's going to be the one doing stuff oh and meredith also does hp percent damage so meredith is no slouch either you know you don't have to build her like super crazy you can just build her tanky and she's still going to offer you value as well with her s3 so it's not going to be the worst thing ever right uh so here we go we're also getting defense breaks i forgot that uh berenice can defense break now the other thing about berenice is that berenice is going to be able to uh, to satisfy hit counts as well so not only does she give you the massive healing um well shielding i should say and then regen which then gives you healing um that's all based off of her hp value so that's what makes her so freaking good now the other thing is too is that both Elaine and Li Guang technically can buff still. So that's going to be a huge, huge perk for you when doing this fight is having both of them being able to uh, potentially still buffs, which is going to make this much, much easier for you, right? So there we go. Got Ta with the freeze. So that leaves open our hit counters. So that right there. Now, the only thing that sucked was we didn't remove the uh, buffs on Fafnir uh, in enough time. So we have a higher uh, hit count threshold. But also with that, it is good that uh, that she wasn't um, 
Sorry, y'all. My uh, camera actually cut out. But uh, yeah, like I was saying, luckily, uh, Ty wasn't critted. Um, and she technically can sustain herself here. She can give herself standoff as well. So that's why her being focused, even with the HP ceiling uh, decrease on her, makes her really, really valuable here. Uh, now, the only thing is, is that obviously is the buff stealing. Like if you can get that buff stealing to be more consistent, it does help out a lot more with dealing with Fafnir. Uh, but let's see. Nope. Li Guang, Li Guang didn't get it. I think it's her her uh, S2 can also potentially take it as well. So we got one more buff we got to try to take here. It looks like they're not trying to give it to me, which is okay. We're just going to go ahead and do that damage. We got our shield coverage from Berenice. And then cool. Now we go into our freeze. So you, as you can see, she becomes the primary focus. And I don't have this like super sped tuned or anything like that. Like she's just really good at making sure that majority of the fight, she's the one being isolated for uh, that hit count, right? Now Li Guang's gonna finish off that shield. And now we are in the last HP bar. A lot of the times, and this is kind of my rule of thumb, uh, if you get to the last HP bar, HP bar and somebody dies, that doesn't mean your run is terrible. Usually your goal is to get to that last HP bar. And as long as you're there, typically you can finish, right? There's You're, you're going to kill, right? It's just what it is. So uh, coming to an end. Oh, that's the other thing too. You also have a uh, crit down. I'm pretty sure there's a crit down. Um or crit rate down bu uh, debuff on Fafnir. So that's also something that helps out a lot because if he has that buffs, he will have a higher chance of critting you. Um, so yeah, that's also another thing. But this team also works fairly well uh, for what it's worth, right? Now, um, outside of that, let's actually go back. Uh, like I was mentioning before, like if you don't have the Elaine, you can use Louis, uh, you, you know, Tang Yuan, you have uh, Lin who could also still be used here. You have Haw that can still be used here. So those are still really, really good options. Uh, but I will say for sustaining your team comp, this does become a lot more intentional. I mean, Amit still is king when it comes down to sustain here. R2, Yuan and Tron, very, very necessary for this to be uh, a much better uh, run, I would say, especially at its like faster levels. And even even now, Mateo, uh, even hide, uh, offer a lot of value if you go for like a sustained hide into a damage hide ver and or a Mateo. Uh, he's also able to do extremely well as far as damage if you pair him up with Ta. So that's pretty much that, right? Now, uh, I want to quickly show you my uh, gear. So my Meredith, HP percent, HP percent, and speed, nothing crazy. She doesn't have to be on Adamantine. Uh, personally, I would say put her on Groove Set, but I already had her on it, so I just left it uh and of course guys skill your units up now uh with my Li guang we got about 60 percent crit rate uh which is pretty okay uh we have crit damage percent attack percent and attack percent for her uh and she does have a good amount of speed subs so that's one thing you might notice is that uh, i got some speed on certain pieces so it still helps me out with rotation uh and then we have elaine uh who's going to be at hp percent HP percent in speed. Now, like I mentioned before, I did my Elaine on a tank build because of the fact that she has a tendency to die on DPS in this comp. So um, I actually made sure that she was on this build instead so she can get the hit counter and still gave her 60% crit rate. So she was at least critting, right? Uh, now, ultimately, if you can't get better units, then you want to go into a damage build with her. But for the time being, a sustained build, hey, you got to make you gotta make whatever you can make work work, right? Uh, then with Haw, uh, with Haw, God, Ta, Ta is just going to be simple, 80%, 80% in speed. Uh, that's really the biggest thing with her. Making sure she's skilled up is going to be really important. Um, and that's that, right? So, of course, guys. That's going to be the sustain comps in a nutshell for a Pep, Kronos, and Fafnir, right? Uh, so let me know in the comment section down below if you guys have any additional questions. I hope that this video was able to give you more insight and help you out. Uh, I felt like while we're in this down phase, waiting for new information, I really wanted to kind of tackle some content that I know a lot of you like returning players, early game players, and mid game players really need. So that's going to be that, guys. Let me know what you guys think. Uh, and yeah, stay blessed. Stay charged up, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. <laughs>